All right, Cornelia, here we go. <clears throat> Make sure I'm recording. We are. All right. So five, four, three, two, and one. All right, folks, welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. I am very excited to have as my guest today, Cornelia Elbrecht. Cornelia, welcome. Welcome, Guy. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. It's, a, it's an honor to have you here. So Cornelia is the founder and director of the Institute for Sensory Motor Art Therapy. She has more than 40 years of experience as an art therapist and is a somatic experiencing trauma therapist. She studied at the School for Initiatic Art Therapy in Germany, as well as Jungian and Gestalt Therapy, Bioenergetics, and Body Work. Cornelia has lectured in art therapy at RMIT, Melbourne. She's registered professional member and accredited supervisor, uh, as well as uh, the Australian, New Zealand, and Asian Art Therapy Association. Um, she's published four books on sensory motor art therapy. Welcome, Cornelia. So, um, I, well, I guess. Hold on here. Let me, before you get going, okay. let me share with our <laughs> listeners where you're from originally and where you are currently. So at the moment, I, or for the past 30 years, I've lived in Australia, but I was born in Germany and grew up there. Okay. And uh, it was post-war Germany. And so I, my childhood was very much affected by, you know, what had happened in Germany and the war. Mm -hmm. And I think one of your question was, you know, like, how did I come to my interest in yep. trauma? That's, that's, that's and, my big question. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and basically, uh, I would say the first person who did not what we call PTSD today that I met was when I was eight years old. So everybody in my environment was highly traumatized. Both my parents joined the, the army and the Navy as 16 year olds in 41. So, so they had ex horrific experiences and basically everybody in my environment was highly traumatized, but it was considered to be the normal. Uh, it was more that when I finally met someone at uh, yeah, at around the age of eight, who had what you'd consider a normal response. It was a really weird and bewildering and confusing experience because uh, I actually didn't know what it was like to have a safe relationship. So at what point do you grow up at what point in your in your youth or development did you realize you wanted to pursue this as a profession and when I say this at what point did you realize you wanted to become a, a therapist specializing in, in in trauma um it's um it was very early on um uh, I would have been the first, I studied, like I ended up in the German student revolution and I studied uh, psychology and sociology and it just didn't do it for me at all. So I um, applied for art school and in the first semester, it was quite symbolic. I lost my key to, to my apartment. And it was raining at night, yeah. And it was November, and it was cold, and uh, and I was crying. And this uh, woman uh, picked me and basically said, "Come in and have a cup of tea and just calm down." And um, I, I walked into her apartment, and her walls from bottom to the top were covered in drawings yeah. in these really large um yeah, very spontaneous drawings and she told me that she had just come from this retreat center where she had studied uh, uh, or had uh, had sessions in guided drawing as therapy and um, how amazing it was for her and 
it was almost like in that moment that I knew that I wanted to combine the art and therapy because it didn't exist as a profession. You couldn't study it at the time. You know, that was the early 70s, yeah, mm -hmm. that uh, no one had ever heard about art therapy. And I, um, yeah, with yeah, many detours, I did my fine arts degree. I ended up in this center in the Black Forest where she had been. And um, I basically stayed for 18 years. And, and that was quite an uh, extraordinary place uh, of, um, you know, like Maria Hippie was a boy, a union analyst and a psychologist. And, and Durkheim was a professor for philosophy and psychology and had spent 10 years in Japan studying Zen Buddhism. So it was like the German equivalent of Esselen. Mm -hmm. They had a center there and there were people coming from all over the world, but mostly, yeah, we were Germans who are all yeah, in this very confusing state of, uh, uh, yeah, no values, no direction because our parents had been so, dysfunctional in many ways and did you so was that something that was was that conscious for you did, did were you at a point where you were like this was my upbringing and I realized you know I, I grew up in this traumatic environment and so I wanted to move so was it kind of a subconscious pull that moved you into psychology and, and working as a therapist I, I guess I just was overwhelmed with questions mm. and, uh, and and problems yeah, that uh, yeah, that uh, so I was searching yeah, intensely and uh, had also been searching in in directions that were not that beneficial for me like I had lived for yeah in my early twenties for over a year in the uh, community in Switzerland with Timothy Leary. So I had uh, yeah, had probably the most incredible uh, guidance for LSD, but at the same time when he was arrested, I was yeah, left mm -hmm. dangling yeah, mid air. And I believe there were all um, yeah, attempts to answer the questions and to deal with uh, this confusion and this loss uh, of uh, direction and self that I experienced. And when I came to that community, it was initially, it was simply therapy. And at the same time, um, it became increasingly a learning experience um, because there were yeah, like when I studied in, in Frankfurt at the university, it was all rats and mice. And, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, like coming from the experiences I had, yeah, I had really different questions. And, uh, and in the Black Forest, in this center, it was like, almost like a laboratory because none of these things, therapies existed. So it was martial arts, it was yoga, it was meditation, it was drama, it was music, it was uh, um, Tai Chi, it was body work. And uh, yeah, we created the therapies, you know, we needed, you know, they came out of experimentations, because there was no guidance, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, it was almost the therapies emerge, the new therapies emerge from this environment. And I think they did globally. I think the same happened in the US as well. So you, and, when you um, I was going to say, yeah. when you walked into that uh, person's apartment and saw those incredible drawings, yeah, that was the way you described it was was really great. I mean, it just felt like a, a light bulb went off for you. you it was so yes. inspiring for you. At what point did you say to yourself, what, what, talk about how you founded the Institute for Sensory Motor Art Therapy? Um, it was basically, I stayed in the 
uh, Black Forest for 18 years and I graduated from being a client to a student to a therapist and a co-worker. And then my life for many reasons there fell apart and I moved to Australia. And coming here, it was like there was nothing. No one knew what art therapy was. Uh, no one worked with the art. Um, it was the most conservative version of therapy you could think of. And, um, and at the same time, I was nourished enough yeah, from the rich experience I'd had. So, so it was very clearly that I came with the intention to set up a center and I wanted it to be in the country. I wanted nature to be part of the healing experience. And um, I had to yeah, adapt a, a lot of the modalities in order to um, yeah, reach the people here or to be taken serious by um, yeah, the mental health professionals here in the country. And over time, this has changed enormously. And I guess I arrived um, uh, at a point where I was still struggling to have a language. And when I, I did the training with Peter Levine in somatic experiencing, that almost gave me the, the language to explain what I was doing. So in many ways, I was working like a, a true bottom-up approach because I had just been working with the arts and drawing and with clay because it worked and it was so effective and in a very body-focused way. But I could not really explain you know, why it worked so well. I stuck with it because you know, it, I could see it helped had helped me, it helped clients, but I couldn't really explain why. And it's, it's in the past 10, 15 years, there's really come a language in the neurobiology that, yeah, like allows us to explain you know, these processes and uh, to understand more what trauma is and what it does to the brain and how we can work with it. And it's become very clear that this body-focused approach that I learned back in the 70s is really the most um, effective tool for it. Mm -hmm. But um, for a long time, I knew how to do it, but I couldn't explain it to anyone. If that so makes sense. It, it certainly does. So uh, the Institute for Sensory Motor Art Therapy, is that affiliated with S Sensory Motor Psychotherapy Institute at all? Um, no. Okay. I mean, I know... I know Pat Ogden, but it is like it is a standalone, uh, you know, like really from all the modalities that have developed, you know, from the 70s onwards. Okay. Now, and the, inst what, is, what is the goal of the Institute? <clears throat> Training therapists. Okay. But that would be the most, yeah, that is uh, so, um, and it is mostly psychologists, social workers, counselors who come here, as well as art therapists who've trained at uh, the universities in the more what I call cognitive approaches to art therapy, and who are really looking for a body focused or trauma informed way. Now, so you're talking about body body informed as well as uh, utilizing art art therapy. Define what that means to you. What does art therapy mean to you? And, and uh, what therapy. is it in your in your definition? <laughs> um, it is basically using the art as therapy, and I profoundly believe in the power of the arts. You know, that uh, 
yeah, it is not just a lot of the art therapy is done, you know, we create the drawing and then we talk about it. Whereas uh, like the approach that I have been trained in and used and develop doesn't really need the story or you know, the talking about it. You know, like one approach, for example, is uh, the, the, the body mapping with drawing. You know, so that you draw bilaterally in rhythmic repetition and you draw what is happening in your body. Mm. I often call it like you draw having a massage. And uh, so clients go from this painful place, yeah, like, you know, my shoulder is hurting, yeah, and uh, this, this is uh, making me really feel uncomfortable or it's even frozen, to what kind of movement do I need here if I had a massage in order to ease this, yeah, so, so, and then they draw, yeah, this movement in rhythmic repetition, mm. and they actually experience that the shoulder drops or eases mm. and so it is self-empowering it is self-directed and it doesn't really need to go into the story of why is my shoulder like this mm -hmm. and um yeah so are you, are you saying that for example uh clients will will draw something and they're it, it, it's not really necessary to talk about it. The, the, the process, the journey is in the drawing itself, is in that experience. Yes, yes. And more in this, what's these days called the bottom-up approach, but we didn't have these words for, for a long mm -hmm. time. Yeah, that you come from a body focus, from motor impulses, yeah, then you sense it, that is the sensory motor, yeah, like uh, how does it feel in my body? How does it resonate? If I do this movement, for example, if I draw this movement, what happens then? And uh, yeah, oh, this is how I contract and brace. And mm -hmm. oh, and this is the movement, how I can open up and let go. And uh, so uh, yeah, like I often think, you know, if you work with someone who's like this and then you talk a lot about, you know, what it feels like to be like this, yeah, you go um, in circles, yeah, whereas if you first move into, yeah, so this, yeah, and feeling better about yourself and then you can look from that perspective, um, you know, who you are and how you feel and what you need and also then look at what happened in the past. So um, <clears throat> in somatic experiencing, this is one of Peter Levine's concept. He speaks about the trauma uh, vortex and the counter vortex. So that here is the trauma story. And I can only work with the trauma story if I have a good or a safe place I can go to. If I know what to do, if I can find an active response to what happened, because otherwise I go more and more into freeze and overwhelm. And um, I had been doing this almost like intuitively, and it was it was wonderful if, uh, yeah, to actually talk with Peter. And it was Peter Levine very much who encouraged me to write my books. Because he said, like you, you like this is the application of my work here. So, uh, yeah, um, uh, which was very encouraging, yeah, because he has this very intense, you know, like this focusing, you know, this tracking of inner movements, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, what's happening in the body, and we know that trauma happens in the body. Yeah. Do you find? And, do you find that? Um, there's a, um, excuse me, a kind of a learning curve for, for clients to utilize art therapy. You know, I, I'm not an artist. I, I can't do that. You're going to judge me and so forth. 
Of course, yeah. That and and I mean, I these days I see mostly clients and those who are really interested in using the arts. But at the beginning, it was very difficult. I worked at a clinic in Melbourne with, in conjunction with thirteen psychiatrists, and it was a real struggle to be taken serious yeah mm -hmm. like they would joke the only patients in the waiting room who seemed to be looking forward to their session were mine <laughs> yeah but <laughs> yeah but um yeah at the same time um uh, yeah like art therapy has for a long long time stayed in this uh, pocket of yeah like we're sort of better entertainers yeah mm -hmm. but <laughs> Where it's, yeah, for for me, um, uh, yeah, the arts have always been more powerful as a healing agent than any talking therapy. Mm. And I guess I was fortunate that you know, as a very young, uh, you know, confused client myself, I came to the arts and to bodywork far more than you know, all the theoretical studies you know, that I did later on. Mm -hmm. There seems to be something so, um, uh, I, I, I guess for lack of a better word, just pure and visceral about, uh, you know, the arts. You know, I'm looking at your website now and you've got this great picture of these hands. I think they're, they're, they're like rubbing in, chalk or whatever you know it's, it's kind of really organic get organic feeling and at the same time you know going back to what i said before i think a lot of a lot of people i mean i certainly have myself felt like oh, i don't want to be judged i don't want to be there, there's a certain walking out onto the 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 peer of vulnerability when you're doing art in therapy in the context of therapy um, but yeah, I, I, I love what you yeah. love. Yeah. I love what you're saying about, you know, the story, we don't have to use words. Talk more about that. Okay. Um, like the book, yeah, that you uh, said, yeah, like the, the, yeah, like I um, picked this book here on the hand, which is by Frank Wilson and he's a neurologist who um, works with musicians who have, for example, one finger will no longer work. Yeah, so if you're a concert pianist and you can't move that finger, your career is over and not for a, um, um, yeah, like a yeah, physical injury. Um, and it was in his book that I really understood the evolution of the hand. Mm. And I have, my last book was very much about haptic perception. You know, like, what are the hands doing in art therapy? Yeah, you know, what's the function of the hands in art therapy? And how do, and all the hand movements uh, relate to what happens in our brain and in our neurobiology, and also in developmental terms. So, so that, for example, we move with very particular hand movements, even from in utero to birth, to mm -hmm. uh, yeah, through the first formative years of life. And so when I put a, a box, a field filled with clay, in front of a child or an adult and uh, there are 10 to 15 kilos in there so it takes away this oh i have to make something with this yeah which is ego based yeah? like the most clients will just go like go oh yeah like yeah there is this oh there is this experience of uh oh yeah it's touch yeah it's mm -hmm. cold it's warm you have warm water uh, and yeah and then for example clients began to caress yeah the the surface of the clay like skin yeah and uh, yeah and others can't touch it yeah so so there is 
actually an intense experience you work with. And um, yeah, sometimes a session is about nothing more than finally daring to yeah, connect or to drill a hole into the mm. surface with one finger or to just experience this sensory uh, connection yeah, with an other than me. So, so that's when you, for example, connect with attachment and attachment trauma. Mm -hmm. And it is more that you repair yeah, and post-nurture yeah, something that the client has not experienced rather than talking about it. Because uh, like I was a very traumatized child and talking about what had happened didn't do much for me because everything that had happened or the very formative parts were in this at an age where I didn't have language yeah, uh, uh, before age four. Yeah, so, so they were felt sense experiences, they were um, relational experiences. Yeah. So uh, I have always been drawn to therapies where yeah, you can repair yeah, this relationship. Yeah. And um, yeah, the same is about working with finger paints, for example. Yeah, you have this yeah, connection, yeah, you and and many will not even draw anything but just cream, yeah, their their hands and just feel. Yeah, this skin and skin connection. Let and just, if you look, let, yeah? let me just uh, uh, reintroduce you here. I'm speaking with Cornelia Elbrecht. She's the uh, founder and director of the Institute for Sensory Motor Art Therapy. Um, I, I love, I love this. There's, there's something, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking to myself that there is there's the feel, it feels to me like there's self-trust is needed on the part of the client here and, and not unlike a lot of other therapies, but what's your response to that? Um, I mean, you spoke before about, you know, like this being self-conscious about doing art, yeah, and uh, uh, and uh, adults, for example, as if you came to see me as an adult, yeah, I mean, I would establish some kind of connection with you, but the art making process, yeah, like the drawing and the clay would be with closed eyes. Mm. So, so it's actually not about... Uh, any focus about making something, you know, painting something, uh, it is all about this sensory motor connection uh, with uh, yourself through the art making process. You know, that you, know, you have the sensory experience of the clay or of the paints or the, the crayons and the texture and you have the movement yeah, mm. of the rhythmic repetition in guided drawing or in yeah, grabbing and building you know, with the clay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, each time it takes courage, yeah, for example, to yeah, just um, push uh, yeah, several kilos of clay around. And I can only do this if I dare to destroy for example mm. I can only create if I destroy and often those who have been uh, too traumatized that they no longer believe in the uh, repair yeah will actually have great trouble in destroying yeah mm. the destroying yeah the smooth surface of this clay field in order to create wow wow um, so we have a lot of therapists obviously listening to this um, are mm. your do you offer training is it online is it just in person talk about that um, uh, we have developed uh, online courses uh, you know, uh, COVID has certainly helped with this so all the training is now online and is globally available 
but and this is both in uh, the the guided drawing uh, uh, as well as what yeah, we call initiatic art therapy, which includes more the traditional forms of working with symbols and imagery, uh, but then an intense focus on these body-based you know, trauma-informed approaches. And uh, we're currently working on an online training on the yeah, working with children with the clay, mm. children who are experiencing developmental trauma, because there are lots and lots of children, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, who, um, yeah, benefit in an amazing way, yeah, from working with the clay, yeah, through the hands, because it will, you yeah, through the hands, and I come back to this book, mm -hmm. yeah, you can. Yeah tap into all the developmental needs and you know, the developmental uh, building blocks or milestones they're missed because they were traumatized and overwhelmed so their development arrested yeah and uh, yeah in a playful way you know when you work with the clay and most kids really love the clay uh, um, you can you know, repair, yeah, uh, or yeah, literally repair, like put, yeah, in mm -hmm. the brain together, yeah, these um, broken synapses. And um, like there are kids who go from medication to you know, learning to read and write as 10 year olds within one term, once. Yeah, their brain has been settled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's been yes. settled through playing with clay and water and yeah, to repair this relationship their hands have with another than me. I hope mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, because it, it is really <laughs> you have this relationship, you have this big box, yeah, in front of you, and it is not about making things, but uh, yeah, like, am I safe in a relationship? What does it feel like to be safe in a relationship? Yeah, what does it feel like when I trust myself? Yeah, and what does it feel like when I can pull all, you know, pile all this up? Yeah, and uh, yeah, how does that resonate in my body? This sounds uh, pretty amazing to me. Uh, I, there's just something so... I love this. Um, I wish I had a big vat of clay right here now in front of me. Um, all right, Cornelia, as we wind down here, what's what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? It's the, um, uh, yeah, like through my website. The website, okay. And that yes. is... Um, CenturyMotorArtTherapy.com centurymotorarttherapy.com okay we'll have that linked up here at the show notes page at yes. thetraumatherapistpodcast.com look thank you so much I'd love to have you back I mean there's so much to talk about here and yeah. um, I really appreciate you you getting up early and, and being a guest um, yeah. you're, you're, you're so inspiring I love it thank you so much thank you very much yeah and, all right Cornelia. Uh, yeah Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.